I'm very happy and proud to be a member here at United Church of Christ of Fort Lauderdale, where God is still speaking. Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way. And I'll do just what you say in your time. In your time. In your time. You make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, my life I, to you I bring. May each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time. Be to you a lovely thing in your time. Please join me in the mission statement which you will find located behind the front cover in your bulletin. Our mission statement is to develop passionate followers of Christ through the celebration of worship, the excitement of God's Word, the blessing of God's healing, the rewards of service, the honoring of God's creation, and the joy of fellowship. We are all welcome at God's table. We are a welcoming, open, and affirming church to all people of all races, genders, ages, sexual orientations, professions, previous religious affiliations, nationalities, or mental and physical conditions.
Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have him sit down to eat. He will come and serve him. If he comes during the middle of the night, or near dawn, and finds him so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house be broken into. He also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Very tough text this week. Because the images of God being judgmental and fire and more. The Son of God is coming in an unexpected hour. And after I read that text again last week, last Sunday night, I've been reflecting upon that all week. The unexpected hour. If it was tonight, and we knew it was to be tonight, how would we spend our afternoon today? Would it be any different? Last week's scripture and message was about priorities, and that spoke to us about putting God first in our lives and who God is as the inspiration. <coughs> We learned that we have to make open to learning and growing both in our faith and also in our understanding of these texts. The parable we studied last week was about the rich person who produced abundantly. There was abundance on his farm and his barns were full. They were flowing over. So what he did was he decided to build bigger barns to hold this abundance. But as we heard that night, was his unexpected hour. So it is with those who store treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. And it flowed right into the message this week about the unexpected hour. Jesus again talks to us about priorities. Be dressed for action, and he says to have our lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as he comes and knocks. I guess if he wasn't married, they didn't open the door for his wife too. I guess I don't know. But I'm sure it means both we know that. But of course this text doesn't endorse slavery because it's talking about the masters and the slaves. But it does endorse the need to be prepared. And I was thinking last night about we seem to be all of our life in preparation, aren't we? We send our children to school so they can study and get good grades and get a good job. We want them to find a spouse to become married and have a family. We prepare them for that, to get a better job and be successful. Then we plan for retirement. And then we plan what we're going to do for retirement. It seems like we prepare for transition our entire lives. We prepare meals, we prepare for marriage, we prepare for the holidays, we prepare for vacation. We're always preparing. But you must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour of year. I just couldn't get away from that this week. Are we prepared for the unexpected? We've always looked at this text as apocalyptic, the end of times, we call it. 
Will we be saved and will we be ready when Jesus returns? But we're invited this morning to look at this text deeper into the interpretation of that. Much deeper. It is much more than that. The unexpected hour being ready for the Son of Man pertains to today. Are we ready now? It's not about a future event only. Are we ready now? Where's our treasure today? Not sometime in the future. Are we in the process of ourselves of building bigger barns, whatever that is in our lives? Are we focused on that and we miss the opportunities for ministry and for love? For where your treasure is, your heart is also is present tense. For where your treasure is now, where is my heart now? In this text, Jesus is teaching the disciples and us today that when the heart of our possessions is greed, when the heart of our possessions is about greed, that we must be liberated from that error, is what he's speaking to us today. And love can enable us to reorder our lives so to care for those in need. Love can help us reorder our lives for those in need. The unexpected hour. It's been a difficult week. We have a community here, but I call it family. I've been a pastor, I guess, four and a half years now. In the last couple of years, we have had tremendous losses of physical loss of people who we love so closely and so dearly. My heart aches, and I know yours does. We miss them being here. I miss that kids coming down the aisle every Sunday morning. But grief is a result of loving so deeply. This week brought the news of a dear conqueror and friend retired and received a cancer diagnosis. This week we had another family member, 23 year relationship and the one spouse entered hospital. We know that love is at the center of this. Because what I see in a witness for the people who gather together around these people and share their love with them. As if this afternoon was the unexpected hour. But they didn't do it for a reward. They did it out of love and continue to do so. And when people are here, I work in hospice for years, it's happened in part of my training. And I've dealt with many times with people who were in their transition and who would talk. And often they would ask me, what is heaven going to be like at my time? And my response always before this week was, all I can tell you about is the here and now. But I do know that heaven will be a billion times even more than we can even fathom what is that. But we're here now. But this week from reading this text, heaven is a place where only love exists. And love is a place where all are equal. There, as we heard last week, neither Jew nor Greek or male or female. Heaven is a place where we love our neighbor without condition. Love is a place where we care for one another and that care is greater than any earthly possession or possessions. Heaven is a place where love has no limitations, exclusions, doubts, or fear doesn't ask for a passport. It's the kind of place that Jesus and the text today invite us to. 
Each week we pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We live in heaven now when we choose love. We get glimpses of that throughout this church and throughout this faith community. We see that especially on Thursdays with Ruth Ministry. We see that in the congregational prayer team met yesterday. Eight people sitting around the table talking about the 21 people who need visitation. We see that. That love, that heaven on earth. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. The treasure is a love expressed by this community for those in time of need and hurry, and also a time of joy we celebrate with one another. The treasure is this faith community and the bond which exists here and now. There's a Benedictine nun, a theologian, and author who's written dozens of books. Now, I've loved ever since I read her first book. Her name is Joan Chittister. She invented progressive. <laughs> Say, she was an amazing author. I invite you to read any and all of her books. But I like this, what she wrote about community. She says about community, a spirituality of community requires meaningful contact, a common vision and the beating of a cosmic heart big enough to embrace all of life, she says. And the important thing to remember about community is that it involves a great deal more than simply bringing a group of people together. To be in community means that you will be there for others and they will equally be there for you. You're not alone either in your happiness and you're not alone in your sorrow. You will be with people in community who share common goals, who have a common vision for life, who understands what it means to strive those things with others of like mind and heart. And this brings us together in like mind and heart. We're here to see the same thing together and to be supported by one another. She ends with where your treasure is, your heart will be also.
going to be the unexpected hour. How will we live differently this afternoon? Will we reach out to people and tell them what we really want them to know? Will we tell them what they mean to us? Will we share that's the best gift we can give?
us the gift of life. You give to the world the gift of your Son, so that we may live forever. Continue to lead us through the paths of righteousness, and we pray that we make the choices that reflect your love. May we choose to live our lives to reflect your image and Jesus' way. May we choose to love our neighbors as we love your presence which exists within us. When the unexpected hour comes, may we be grateful and not full of regret. May we hear your words, good and faithful servant. We pray for our world leaders. May they choose love and to love our neighbors in their decisions. We pray for the youth. May we be your example for them. We pray for those who have special needs at this time and we call their names out loud. And now we stand and sing the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Lord's Prayer. Thank you. 